Hey everyone, thank you for being here today. It's Tuesday, uh, March 26th, and this is Tuesday Notary Titans. It is so good to see y'all's faces. We missed you last week. Uh, my name is Jen Neitzel. I'm the creator of Marketing for Notaries, and I am here with Laura Bewer. Say hi, Laura. Hello, Laura. <laughs> We missed seeing everybody last week. If you are, if you're able to, if you're in a position to turn your camera on, please do. It helps us to get to know you a little better. And we love seeing your smiling faces. If you can't, we completely understand. We know sometimes you can't uh, get those cameras turned on uh, if you're in the middle of doing something. We completely get it. So you guys know how this call works. Laura and I are here to answer any questions you have about your notary business. And all you have to do to get in line to have your question answered is to raise your virtual hand. You can find that at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And if you don't see um, a button to push that says raise hand, go all the way over to the right and look at the little three dots with the word more underneath it. When you click on that, you will see uh, a raise hand option. You can click on that and your virtual hand will be raised. So while you guys are getting in line to have your questions answered, go ahead and raise your hands now and get that done uh, so we can get the line started and get those questions answered. We're gonna start with just a couple of announcements about what is going on in the notary community. We've been sharing with you guys over the last several TNT meetings that we are now sourcing all of our information that we advertise in this chat um, through the newly launched Innovator Spotlight that is part of Notary Business Builder. Jen uh, Cooper, who's helping us out today. Thank you, Jen Cooper, for your help. Uh, she's going to put in this chat for you some links uh, so you can check out NBB Spotlight. It's kind of like a cool marketplace for notaries. And we're just releasing it. We're just building it and inviting NBB members to post their, the, uh, their offerings there. And today I want to highlight one of our innovators, and that is Linda Benningfield. She offers digital resources for notaries. And the link is now in the chat. You can go check out her profile and all the really cool offerings that she has for notaries um, in the digital realm. And there is some cool stuff there. So let's get started with some questions. Cheryl has her hand up. Cheryl, tell us where you're calling from and what your question is today. You're muted. You're on mute. Unmute. There I am. Okay. Hi. Good morning Hi. or afternoon, I guess now. Um, I'm calling from Cleelum, Washington. And my question has to do with setting prices for my services. I'm kind of like totally lost. How do I go about doing that? Um, is that a, I mean, I know, you know, I do a lot of loan signings, but I'm getting more and more into the direct notary business. And I'm not sure, you know, um, right now I'm charging a service fee based on a radius. And then, you know, obviously $10 per notarization for Washington. Um, but it's really kind of inconsistent. And I'm not sure if there's a, a formula I should be using, or if it's a per type of document, or anyway. So yeah. Great question, Cheryl. Laura? Yeah, so first of all, when we're doing direct work that way with the public, typically the formula is, what is my per notarization that I'm allowed, maximum, that I'm allowed to charge? Doesn't matter what kind of document, we don't get to charge by the kind of document or by the type of notarization, unless you're a state that has different pricing for that. Uh, instead, we, we start with that and then we add what we call a service fee, travel fee, convenience fee, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and then you base that fee based on what is the time and cost it takes to be able to provide that service. So having a radius is one of the ways we do that. Um, and so let's just say I have a neighborhood rate and my neighborhood rate might be 
$35 to go there and plus 15 per, because that's what it is in California. However, that's for home service. And the other way I look at it is it's very different in what it takes for me to provide the service at a hospital than it is at somebody's home. Now I might have to pay for parking. The parking's far away. I've got to walk as far as I drove. Plus I got to navigate the hospital. I've got to check into security. So I may have time equal to the travel time just to get to them. Um, and then I may have interruptions. So I plan that appointment to have more time to accommodate it, number one. And number two, it's not $35 anymore. That fee might be 75 to 100, depending on uh, how far I got to go. Do I have to pay for parking? What's the process to get in? Uh, because of all that adds to the cost, then I need to charge more. So the two things I look at is how far is it to get there? Do I have to do anything else? Jail, same way. Do I have to go through a screening process? Do I have to wait for a sheriff to take me back there? That all adds to my time, right? My wait time, walk time, whatever time that is. And that's what makes it more expensive, not the type of document. So does that help you, Cheryl? There we go. Uh, yes, it does. Um, I, um, yeah, I, I guess what, uh, so uh, another question I have is that my, my fees for, um, uh, notary work in uh, the real estate area, they are, uh, kind of all over the place. I don't, <laughs> um, I, I basically will charge whatever the market will bear as far as loan signings go. And, um, you know, I, uh, I have a, a, a range that I go by, but I don't have really set fees for every single company that I work for. Mm -hmm. Well, and you uh, might, I didn't either. Uh, okay. So it's really about each, even the same company. It's, they have different lenders, different customers, different title. They have different number of documents that need to be notarized. Some are only a hundred pages, some are 200 pages. VA is going to be different than reverse is going to be different than sellers is different than purchase refi. So really what I had were fees based on the type of loan signing, regardless of who the customer is, because I had an idea on the average what it takes me to do a refi or purchase, which is about the same versus a seller versus a VA or reverse mortgage, which is a lot more. And it really didn't matter who the customer was. I know it takes more time for these, less time for these. And that that's how I uh, did it. So it wasn't by the customer. It was by the workload. Okay. Uh, and that's kind of where I, where I am in that. And then also um, one more thing, please. Um, I, you know, when when you get the blast, when you get the email and you respond and you bring it up and they're saying we're offering this, but you know, some of those, some orders are like you said, 200 pages, some are a hundred pages, uh, some are seller, you know, a, a refi, could be, you know, one thing with one uh, lender and one thing with another lender. Um, how do you, I mean, how do you know what you're getting into? I mean, can you know? It's a grab bag. You don't know. Okay. Why I don't yeah. accept those kinds of jobs. If I don't have someone to talk to so that I can figure out the details or scope of that job and mm -hmm. then hey, I'm, you're asking me to do this, 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 and this. Here's what my fee is for that. If mm -hmm. I don't have that opportunity, then that's not my customer. Now, okay. if you may not agree with me on that and say, well, I got to take what I got to take. Well, then you're going to get a surprise. And <laughs> yeah, a great yeah. job or it was a crappy job. And hopefully you average out in the end. But I like to take control. Uh, I, I understand. Yeah, <laughs> and, I and, it's right. So yeah. then- the cattle calls are not my kinds of jobs. That's why I don't do snap docs or unless you have a snap docs where the you you have a relationship with a customer 
that happens to use it, then you know. But if you don't, then it's a big grab bag and, you know, like what you get. Cause that's right. You- okay. Um, uh, let's see. I guess, I guess that's it. Um, I was just going to say, you know, my, my, what I accept and, and, and I counter often, Mm -hmm. often on those, uh, because my terror, my, my 98922 zip code is huge. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it's probably 60 miles from one end to the other. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so my fees are, you know, based on having to you know, the grab bag, you know, is it going to be next door? Or is it going to be 30 miles down the road? And that's why you have to have that conversation or ask those questions and see if they'll answer them in terms of mm-hmm. how, you know, where is this? Where's that address? So I can check to see, is this a 30 minute drive or a five minute drive? Right. Um, and I also think that what many notaries do is they speak with their own wallet um, rather than, uh, allowing them to see the value you bring, all the services you're providing and the effort it takes to make that happen. And this is what is fair for you to do the work. And so right. uh, that's that's an, that's why we feel uncomfortable asking for more money than what they're offering. They are not offering based on knowing what it takes for you to do it. They're saying, hey, I think we'll pay $75 for that. Let's see who takes it. You know, they just throw it out there and hope somebody's right. going to grab it. And I hope, you know, uh, I, I'm in an area where there are not a lot of notaries. And I, you know, I've been doing this for four years now. And uh, I know, you know, you don't just take that $75 offer that they throw out there because it's not, it's not worth it. Anyway, so I'm hoping that the notaries that are coming up are realizing that, hey, we have options here. That's we do right. have options. Okay. Right. I love I love your questions. And I just wanted to add a couple of things. On the first part of your question, um, I, I obviously agree with everything Laura said, but when it comes to pricing strategies, it's screening your calls that you do get direct for your direct business is so important so that you're asking the right questions and getting a full picture of what the customer needs instead of just saying yes, right off the bat, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, and, and it sounds like you are, are doing that. And on, when it comes to um, the signing services, I have to say the salesperson in me has to say, if you are newer to the business, or if you're just looking for a way to grow relationships and get off the signing service gerbil wheel, because that's kind of what it feels like. That's what it felt like to me. Anyway, back when I was uh, working solely with signing services, I would encourage all of you to go check out marketingfornotaries.com because this is what we teach you is how to build those direct relationships so that you're not dependent on that uh, gerbil wheel. And Jen Cooper will put that link in um, the chat here in just a second. But great question, Cheryl. Thank you for asking both of those questions. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Amy Roca. how are you today? Hi, thank you. I'm calling from California. Awesome. And, um, So my question is, I'm venturing finally into the living trust world. Um, Well, I've been in it, but I haven't got anything until today. And um, an attorney I marked it to finally called me back. So it's really interesting because I'm used to like taking control of my signings, my normal signings, right? Loan signings. And I get on the phone with the client. I I'm assessing whether they're mentally alert, if they speak my language. I have like a small conversation on the phone. I'm, I tell them, bring out your ID, read, read me your exact name. I check my docs. So now with an attorney involved, you know, um, it seems like they are the ones taking the lead, which kind of makes me nervous. <laughs> so my question to him today was, okay, um, when will I get the client's information so that I can verify their IDs over the phone with them and whatnot? He says, Oh, my team does that. Um, you know, and so in the email he gave me, it says, um, my, my team will reach out to confirm everything with you, including official notary names. 
Um, so it seems like his team is going to be confirming with them, the client. And then he says the client um, is elderly. This is the contact, which is the son. Here's his phone number, set up the trust signing with them. So in trust etiquette, um, would I be pushing as hard as I normally do? Or do I have confidence that an attorney will take care of most of the stuff and would not give me a client that um, is not um, maybe mentally alert, like the way loan officers will get you, want you to sign them no matter what? <laughs> are attorneys the same way? <laughs> Or are they pretty legit? This is a great question, Laura. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to hear your answer. Well, I would tell you that uh, you need to have that conversation. If they tell you this is elderly client, the two questions I'm going to have, have you verified they can sign unassisted and are they alert and aware themselves? So uh, because if they've been working with the adult child of the signer and they're the ones that coordinated all of this, the attorney may not even know the current condition of the signer. Most of the times I'm going to tell you it isn't an issue. It's really not been an issue for me. However, as soon as they tell me your contact is somebody other than the signer, now I ask those two questions. Have we verified they can sign an assisted because that's going to create a witness situation. Um, have we verified that they're alert and aware and can uh, are oriented at least times four? And some of you have heard me talk about um, oriented times four, meaning can they tell me who they are? Can they tell me um, where they are? Meaning I'm at home, I'm in a skilled facility, whatever. Can they tell me uh, what kinds of documents I'm signing trust documents, I'm signing a power of attorney, I'm signing a document so that my children can take care of things should I pass, right? They can just describe it. And then the fourth thing, if there is a child, adult child involved, I ask, who is this person to you, the relationship? If they can answer those four questions, they are alert and aware enough for me. And so when I mm -hmm. talk to the attorney, I will say, hey, has somebody verified that they're oriented times four? Here are the four things they need to be able to satisfy for me. If he says, oh yeah, absolutely. I've talked to him myself. The kid's just trying to help make the arrangements. Then I will go with it. Um, I will trust the attorney to have done so. But if I ask those questions and the attorney says, well, the son says they're okay, then I'd let them know, you know, it would be a good idea for me to be able to verify uh, either directly with the son, ask these four questions, or even the signer before I come out there. If you have not really communicated directly that you can't tell me that, then I need that. Otherwise, you're going to pay for me to go there and, and the assignment could fail. And sometimes we don't get a second chance with these assignments, especially if they've pointed out their elderly clients. Okay, he did mention that he's going to have an interview, meet with her to interview her next week. Okay, great. Um, So I figured, okay, well, maybe he's also trying to figure out if she's mentally aware. <laughs> I yeah. mean, they have a legal responsibility too, right? It doesn't just fall on the notary if they're the attorney preparing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely, okay. they do. Okay. Now, they may feel um, on the day they interview that person that they're alert and aware. And then a week later, when you go, things are different. You know, when you're at that mm -hmm. stage of life, things can change from day to day. It doesn't mean you can't call that attorney from the table and say, you know, I don't know what they were like with you, but here's how they are right now. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to work for me. All right. So you always have the last word at the moment of signing. Okay. And do you verify, do you like, if, if I'm talking with the son, uh, do I push to kind of get the mom on the line, the signer on the line and, and like do that or push. This is not the same okay. as signings really. Okay. I don't push. The only time I ask more is if a clue has been given to me mm. that there could be a potential issue. If I okay. ask the son, can she sign unassisted? And he says, yeah, why am I going to push any further than that? Or if I say, is your mom alert and aware? Can she speak to me without your assistance? And he mm -hmm. says, oh yeah, she still can do that. I'm not going to push any further. 
Okay. And do, would you ask the son to verify the name on the ID or what ID she has? Or do you let the attorney just take care of that before I let you the go? attorney take care of that? Okay. Uh, if it turns out there's an issue and it's not that there will never be an issue, it certainly could be. Um, but no, I, I think, I think we need to stay in our lane and if okay. taking care of their customer, let's not interfere with that because then they may not want to work with you in the future. Yeah. You know, don't create all this friction if it's not necessary. Okay. Great advice. Thank you so much. That was a great question, Amy. Thanks for asking that. Um, Larry from San Francisco, California. How are you, sir? Hello. How are you guys? Great. What can we help you with today? I have um, a, a, a first a question about, is it okay to recommend a service that you've heard about here? Not here, but you, that you've heard about. Is it okay to recommend or mention a service you've heard about? Um, to, you. Are you talking about to the TNT audience? Yes, yes. Um, so we are, I mean, unless it's in the context of you're telling us something, we, like I said at the top of the call, the last few weeks, we've been sharing that we're only advertising things that are promoted through our innovator spotlight because those things are vetted. We know those are good products. Do you have something specific that you found that has made your life a little easier? Well, it's a service that I just heard about over the weekend for um, putting up a, a very beginning basic website that's like really, really low cost. And it's sort of on the same line as Wink, uh, uh, Winks and that sort of thing. And I'm yeah. Just with it. I'll tell you what, um, once it's, once you, if you're, if you know somebody that's used it and it's what I mean by vetted is we don't want to just throw things out there, um, uh, without knowing that the product or service is works well, and you can function on it without all the upgrades you have to buy. Sometimes that's a thing. Um, so maybe tell me about it a little more in, in, uh, an email and we can talk about it through that. Is, is that okay? Sure, sure. I don't want to get somebody excited about a product and then, I mean, and Laura, unless you disagree. No, I agree because you know what? We, we hear about things, but unless we have personal experience with it and we've dealt with their customer service, we've had the service for a while, unless we really have that experience, I don't think we should be throwing it out there uh, here. Uh, because yeah. we have people getting jumping on that and then finding out there's all these issues. Well, hey, I heard it on TNT. Yeah, because then we'll never hear the end of it, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> Larry, I put my email in the chat if you want to send me some information about it and we can do some vetting and see. And then uh, maybe we can talk about it a different week. D did you have another question for us, too? Yes. Um, not so much a question as an experience. I was doing a signing this weekend, a buyer uh, this Friday. And I, my, my service is limited to San Francisco because I don't drive. I've never had a driver's license or owned a car or anything. And it had so happened that this particular service assigning, I was asked to deliver the, the documents to the finance company because they're also here in San Francisco. But the signer changed the time of the signing. So basically I'm in one end of San Francisco the finance company is in downtown San Francisco. But I kept trying to tell everyone, assigning, even if it is just a buyer package, it's not going to be much shorter than an hour. People are going to want to look at stuff. Mm -hmm. What time do you guys close? And they kept on insisting, no, we're fine, we'll do it. And of course, the signer got a look at the documents and was like, hold it, wait a minute, I have questions. And I'm like, well, I can't rush them. I'll, I'll let them read and take their time and call the officer. So by the time we finished, I had a half hour, like the office was closing at four. We finished at 3.30. So I'm all, I, 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 there's, I don't think there's any way I'm gonna make it across town in a half hour on Muni. So I decided to fall back to Lyft because I don't do Uber, I think they're too evil. And I thought Lyft was a lot less evil and Lyft, I've discovered that they're no longer five to 10 bucks a ride. They were charging like 60 bucks to get across town. And I'm like saying, like, ah. and luckily the buyer, the, the signer saw the shock on my face and she asked what was happening. And she wanted to look at how much Lyft, and she thought it was ridiculous. 
So she offered and insisted on driving me across town to drop off the documents because she's like, these are my documents, this is my loan, I need this done, they put this deadline on it, I don't mind driving you, let's go, let's go now. So I made it and I just wonder how many other people who are sort of non-mobile, who aren't drivers, who depend on public transit or whatever, how do you manage that? How do you how do you manage situations like that? Because there's always going to be an issue if you get on the bus or whatever that something's going to make you later. And I wonder how many people here are not driving notaries, but still mobile notaries, if you know what I mean. So they I could, think it's a they could let's put one in the chat, you guys. If you are mobile but don't have a car, if you live in a city, uh, drop a one in the chat so Larry can see you. And sorry, Laura, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Well, that's okay. I I was going to ask the same question to drop a one because frankly, Larry, we're a mobile service, and I really doubt you're going to find that more than five percent of us rely on public transportation um, because of the nature of our service and the nature of the. Uh, changing, ever-changing deadlines on us and documents aren't done. I mean, it's so, uh, we have to be so adaptable and flexible to our customers uh, and transportation is not that way if it's not yours. So I, I don't see anybody putting a one. Has somebody put ones in there? We do. Yeah, we've got some ones in there. Absolutely. I'll come all the way down to the, there we go. Yeah. And the truth yeah. of it is, Larry, that's out of 127 on this call. Yeah, just and a that's handful. what I would expect. Three. Yeah. It, it's it's really um, uh, not uh, the typical way to handle a mobile business. I'm glad you're able for the most part to make that work for you. But then that's the downside for you. And I do I see your hand up, Debbie. Uh, one, uh, I, I will. I, I know you wanted to say something to Larry as well. Um, I just want to mention something too. Um, there is a federal law in place for loan officers that they are supposed to be reviewing their loan documents with their customers three business days prior to signing. So um, you look shocked at that, Larry. But that was the whole reason, right. um, almost twenty years ago now that. The uh, Dodd-Frank Act eliminated the HUD settlement statement and moved over to what's now called the closing disclosure was by law, a customer is refinance, um, uh, refinance are supposed to have three business days, not just for a rescission period, okay, but to review the documents with their customer. So make sure you're aware Look into that law a little bit more, Larry. So if this kind of thing pops up, um, you are not, I guess, allowing the title company and loan officer to put pressure on you when that is not your responsibility to reveal the documents to the borrower prior to closing. It is the loan officer's responsibility. Three business days. And they might have sent them via email and then they never opened it because I've had yeah. that happen. Oh, that could yeah, be. I sent something via email three days ago, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Okay, now that's on them. <laughs> yeah, so, so when somebody's gonna... putting pressure on you and it, you know you don't wanna pressure the borrower, they have every right to read those documents. Maybe they did wanna read them a second time. Maybe something changed and it didn't affect the APR so they didn't have to redisclose the new numbers. Maybe that's what they wanted to look at, but yeah, make sure you're aware of those you know, timelines too. One of the questions I always asked my title company and my direct relationships before agreeing uh, to a job was, has the borrower reviewed these documents or will they require extra time for signing so that I knew how to plan my day? It was part of, this goes back to our first question that yeah. Cheryl asked. It was part of my screening process, even for um, title companies, because it let me know how to build my day. So maybe start, yeah, maybe start asking that question. Are you are you aware if the borrower has reviewed their documents already? If the answer is yes, boom, boom, you're done in 45 minutes. If not, you might need to take a little extra time. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. No. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. And Larry, my email is in the chat. So if you want to shoot me some info on uh, that service, that website service you were talking about, love to see it. 
Um, Garrett, hi. hi. What is your question for us? Jen, before you do the next oh. person, didn't oh, yeah. Debbie have a question related? I'm sorry, Debbie. Yes, I, I said I wasn't going to forget you, and I did. Um, I was just going to give some advice to, to Larry. If I had been in your shoes, I would have called the finance company and said, you know, I've done the signing. We went through the documents. They had questions. It's now 3.30. You know, you've told me you're closing at 4. How would you like me to handle this? And sort of put it on them. Maybe they say they're going to stay up until 4.30 to receive the documents. You know, they, you know, right. th there could be some play there. But that's yeah. what I would have done in your situation. But I think it's great that the, the signer offered to drive you. That's that's, that's really nice. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Debbie. Sorry about that. That's okay, Garrett. Back what back is back your back question back for back us, back Garrett? I'm sorry. Oh. Let's Go see, ahead, Garrett, Garrett, on mute. You are on mute. It looks like Garrett might be frozen too. Well, we can come back to him. We'll hold your spot. Yeah, you know what, Garrett, we are going to come back to you. And while I have everyone's attention before we get to Alicia, I want to talk about a couple of um, events that are coming up in the notary world that I want you guys to know about. There is an NNA Success Summit on April 12th. That's just right around the corner, you guys. It's from 1 to 4 p.m., Pacific time, Vanessa Terry with Notary to Notary and Anna Burza, the marketing notary, they are going to be the featured speaker. So this is going to be a great event. The link is in the chat. If you want to buy an individual pass for $49, or if you want to get the annual success summit pass for 147 to attend all four of them this year. The NNA conference too, right around the corner. Um, if you haven't gotten your tickets, you can go ahead and get them um, at the link in the chat. That is May 13th through 16th in Orlando, Florida. I'm so excited. Can't wait. And if you're not able to attend the NNA conference, but you're still craving that connection, the Michigan Notary Consortium is immediately after the NNA conference. It's in Detroit, May 17th and 18th. And um, the link to purchase tickets for that, if you are in the Detroit area or can get there, is now in the chat. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, hold on, oh. Garrett. Hold on. Okay, sorry. That's okay. Oh, he can't. Okay, he. I was like, who's that? <laughs> I didn't know. It's going on one second, Garrett. Sure. Um, I want to talk about two more events that are happening this year that are really exciting. Um, I'm going to be at the first one. I'm one of the uh, workshop speakers. It's the Notary Cruise to Mexico in November, November 2nd through the 9th. A uh, bunch of information is getting posted right now in the chat. If you're interested, you can make payments um, over the next few months to attend this cruise, which makes it very attractive. And it's quite affordable. Uh, Daniel C. Lewis is, is uh, who is throwing this. And the travel agent's information is now in the chat. And Laura... In October, you're speaking at a Notary Academy retreat, retreat on October 5th in Scottsdale. And the Eventbrite link for that, if you are in the Scottsdale area, is now in the chat where you can go hang out with the one and only goat herself, Laura Bewer. Okay. Garrett, are you there? I'm here. Sorry. Awesome. I, 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 there I, he is. Zoom settings were off. I just wanted to make a comment about the pricing um that was discussed earlier because the, i was listening to the conversation and for me personally you know i i came from a background of sales and i look at it from multiple viewpoints one of the viewpoints i look at is how much business does this client give me if it's one of my high volume clients i am going to offer them a better price per package then I will offer a better price, or let's say I will accept a lower price per package than I will accept from a high vault from a non-high volume client. Um, so a, a high volume client who offers me a loan mod for thirty dollars, I might take that because I'm interested in keeping their business, and I know that I can make that at thirty dollars with one trip compared to say process serving, where it's going to it might take me four trips just to make that same. Thirty dollars. Um, on the flip side of that, if if uh, I get a call and they want it done within an hour, and it's a low volume client or a cash client, 
and it's it's going to take me an hour to get there, an hour to get back, and that type of thing. I'm gonna, I might, I might intentionally price myself out, you know, or I might say, you know what, this is what it's going to be, and here's why, because of this, 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 and this, and it just depends on what it is. But I look, I do a lot of my decision making based on volume. Does this client, is this a high volume client, or is it a client that I want more volume from? And I may, or is this client only spitting out one a month? And it's a pain in the butt to do their closings. Uh, you know, you no, know, that's okay. I'll pass it up. Let somebody else take it. So, you know, it really, it really does. There's a lot of factors that go into to that, um, to that scenario. And then like Laura said too, you know, whether it's a hospital or a, a facility or, or, or a client's home, that there's a whole lot of other factors, but as far as mortgage closings, it comes to, for me, it comes down to volume per client, what, what that volume is per client. Yeah. I think so, that's yeah. a great perspective, Garrett. Yeah. That's, a, that's an additional perspective, but I do want to clarify that what she talked about were the cattle calls. Those are not high volume clients, mm -hmm. right? Right. Docs isn't the client, right? So in her case, that's what I was responding to, but I think your additional perspective is helpful. Thank you for sharing that with us, uh, Garrett. I appreciate that. Did you have a question for us as well? No, no. Well, um, you kind of. This is more on the CTNDA uh, okay. stuff, the certified trust delivery. And yeah. I keep not having the opportunity to jump on the um, Monday with Maloney calls. Okay. But my question is, do you know whether or not they have a PowerPoint presentation? Say I have a senior group that I would like to present to say a church group, and I would be, I, I, I'd like to present to them and have maybe a PowerPoint presentation of what the Maloney's can offer them. Do you know if they have anything like that? Available? The, Maloney's, the Maloney's do have that presentation. Yes. Um, uh, and I'm sure, you know, Stephanie and Mike are just two of the easiest people on the planet to work with. And I have no doubt if you called them up and said that you had a group that you wanted to do a special presentation for, that um, they would either, you know, direct you to one of their evening calls, Garrett, or they would uh, create space for you if it was going to be a particularly large group. Um, and, you know, they would um, come in and meet with you and that group separately. Um together, but separately. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, instead of the uh, Wednesday afternoon calls that they offer. Right. So I understand that they offer those, but I'm saying if I was just going to go in and present to the group myself, having a supporting presentation saying, if you want to, if, if, this is who I am. You all know who I am. If you're interested yeah. in, in so, this type of service, yeah. come so speak to me and if, I'll put you in touch with them. You're asking if they have one that you can borrow, basically. Basically, yeah. I wasn't sure if Bill had put something together or if the Maloney's had put something together. I, I'm trying to build that uh, that area of my business, and um, and uh, like I said, I've got a I've got a, uh, a, 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 a I've got an opportunity possibly to speak to a group of seniors at my church, and right. I'd like to uh, to have some you know at one of their weekly lunches, and I'd like to have something to put together for them. Sure. So as a creator, um, Garrett, I can tell you that um, they would probably be willing to um, maybe work with you to get something branded of your own to make sure that you had all your facts straight and, you know, think, right. you know, that's lined up and, you know, maybe sign off on something you create. Um, but as a creator myself, um, I would be hesitant to um, create a blanket presentation to send out to everybody. Um, but I definitely think it's worth you having a conversation with Stephanie and seeing mm -hmm. if you guys can come up with uh, something that will meet your needs, um, whether you get that started and she helps you with it or, you know, however that works. And her email is in the chat. Jen Cooper just posted that so that you can reach out to her uh, directly and ask that question. I certainly don't want to speak for Stephanie. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate you it. You got it. You got it. And I'm so glad that you're diving into 
the world of being a certified notary trust delivery agent, which is what CNTDA stands for. And if you're interested in learning more about that trust delivery program, Jen Cooper is going to post a link in the chat right now. So hi, Alicia. Do you have a question for us? Well, it was just tied into the trust delivery. Um, perfect and maybe, timing. Yeah, perfect timing. I mean, you just like go right into it. I would like if you could kind of speak to some of us veterans, if you will. I've been a notary for 30 years. I was also an escrow officer. And um, you may have talked on it on previous TNTs. We've all done trusts where anybody who's done this any length of time has done a trust here or there or many of trusts. But can you speak to the the power of being a certified trust delivery notary and how that can benefit our business because I've been trying to share this with other notaries who maybe you know they are trying to find their niche or trying to find how to make income because now you know loan signings are a little a little down but what is really the benefit you know when you know how to notarize a grant deed or a, a trust or a trust search so what is the benefit of really becoming, and I hope this is the right platform to ask this question, right, um, yeah. how you can give me the words that I can tell others to tell about this service? Well, Laura, I'm going to let you kick that off because I can tell you, Alicia, that Laura and I are both very passionate about this subject and this training program. So Laura, do you want to kick this off? Man, I thought you were going to kick it off because it's really about this uh, marketing uh, message. I think uh, to start off with, um, if you have done a few trusts along the way, it doesn't mean you really know how to do it. It means you've notarized some documents that are in that package. And I think that's a different perspective just because I have experience because somebody put these documents in front of me and I figured out how to fill out that acknowledgement doesn't mean I know what the documents are, doesn't mean I know how to present them, doesn't mean that I've built relationships with attorneys directly, it means I probably got them from a signing service along the way. Um, so I think that's the first thing is having expertise in presenting and notarizing the, those documents so that you can identify issues that may come up or that something is missing, it's not there, comes with expertise, it doesn't come with just haphazardly getting them. I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing um, is, that um, the certification, working with an attorney um, who has their own certifications, right? Um, they like working with other experts. Uh, and for the whole, they may or may not think that notaries are experts. And they're probably right on the whole. Um, mm -hmm. To be able to work with somebody that has taken the time to have training and develop expertise with their kinds of documents and their kinds of clients, I think speaks to them specifically. Um, and I think uh, Jen can pick up on some of that. I also believe that this type of business is about direct relationship building with attorneys. And that is not the same as the direct relationships we talk about with loan officers and how that business works. This is a different industry and it isn't all transferable over. Right. Um, I think those are some of the, the major um, positives of become coming that certification. And of course, that certification gives you something to talk about as well. So Jen, I'll let you pick it up from there. Thanks, Laura. So the other side of that, Alicia, is the marketing and the mutual prospecting opportunities, referral source interviews. We guide you through um, how to begin tapping into that um, legal profession of estate planning because it is different than popping into a title office. Title officers are used to notaries coming in and popping in all the time. It's not new. It's not, I mean, you know, it's been around forever. Bring the donuts, bring the $5 Starbucks gift cards. They're all used to that, right? Attorneys are not. So you have to find different ways to approach them, different ways to network with them, different ways to develop these relationships. And that's what sets our training apart is that we break that down and show you exactly how to do that because we worked with a, an advisory board of attorneys to not only help us with the legal language, but 
the overall package it's or the overall training itself. You don't need this certification if you've been if you've got um, if you've got direct relationships with estate planning attorneys already. You don't um, go do your thing. But if it's mm -hmm. something that you are looking to build and to get into to replace the income from mortgages, then this certification is going to show you how to do that. Um, with the marketing plans that we offer inside uh, the CNTDA program, as well as our mutual prospecting partners like Premier Estate Planning, um, who are sourcing people. And this is another important aspect of this, Alicia, is Godery, our directory, Godery.com. Um, I saw Candy um, is, is um, she put in the chat that she um, is a legal doc preparer and she only sources her uh, notaries for trust from Godery, which is amazing. Thank you so much for that, Candy. But the other side of that, too, and we have several partners that are the same way, but Bill is out there actively engaging with the attorney community across the entire country, you guys, to inform them that there is an entire army of trained professional notaries out there willing and able to help them to provide their clients with convenience. And this is new to the, to the estate planning community. They, we have found, uh, Laura, uh, Laura will um, agree, we have found that not a lot of them know about mobile notaries and, mm -hmm. uh, our job is to change that. And that's what we are working on by promoting Goatery to that community. So there's several layers to that question, um, Alicia, and hopefully um, that is helpful. But if you ever feel the need that you, you know, would like one of your colleagues to reach out to Laura or myself, please just have them shoot us an email. We're happy to talk to anybody. Um, we're not... This is not something we have to like hard sell, I would say. Wouldn't you agree, Laura? Yeah, I, I would. And and the other thing is when somebody, and I was this way until I was certified myself, um, is that it's very different to sit at the table with the attorney and you're just the notary. You're just notarizing the documents, right? You're not doing anything else. But what right. is like loan signing agent, you're going to their home with that binder and you're the one presenting the documents, collecting the signatures and doing everything. And you don't have that attorney with you. That's what our program takes that next step to help you do that and have the confidence and competence to be able to do that. That's a different level than just showing up at the attorney's office and notarizing what's presented to you. Yeah. This was awesome. But one quick question, this, thank you. I mean, oh. that was really, but I was looking for a more in-depth answer and you gave it. So you answered my questions. So um, for Gotary, if I hear you correctly, once you're certified, you can become part of that network. And that's what these attorneys are pulling from. So there is going to be business generated by being a part of the Gotary. Absolutely. People are already getting trust assignments through Gotary.com. And our featured members, if you guys were to go check out Gotary <clears throat> excuse me, Gotary.com right now, all of the featured members that you see that pull up when you do a search in your location, those are notary business builders. Notary business builders were, will always get um, the top tier listing. Um, but when you pass your certified notary trust delivery agent training test with an 85% or better, um, we do start your Gotary profile for you. And like I said, people are already getting not only jobs, but reviews on Gotary from those jobs. And guys, we also have um, other partners that um, uh, part that share in the Gotary directory. Some of those are um, loan signing companies. Um, some of those are the estate planning companies. But our goal right now is to really push it out into the estate planning world so that they know the best place to find notaries, the top notaries in the world is on Gotary.com. And that that's the message that we're delivering to the legal community. So Alicia, oh, it looks like you might have froze. Um, hopefully, if you have any questions, please tell your friends to reach out to us. We're happy to talk to them as well. I'm actually going to put you on mute. Uh, really quickly here, Alicia, because I know that you are frozen. So when you come back off, it's not loud. All right. Um, Laura, 
Tell us how people can connect with you outside of this TNT call. Sure, love to. Uh, so a couple different ways. The best way would be join me in Laura's Inner Circle. That's every Saturday morning. It's a free coaching call, similar format to this one. It's 8 to 9 a.m., much smaller group where I can go in depth with you on whatever your questions uh, may be. And if you just leave me your email on my website, I'll send you the link and that doesn't change. The other way I can work with um, you is if you're looking to gain competency in your notary practice itself, that takes deliberate practice uh, because there's just so much to know out there. And I do have something called real world training and I pick up where standardized training, meaning state training leaves off and utilize real documents and talk about what really happens when you have a commission and what you might face. So real world uh, also can be found on my website. And then finally, either through the book, which can be found on uh, Amazon or LBP, which is Laura Bewer Presents. And those are the specialties. What else besides trusts are out there? You might not think of hospitals as a specialty, but there's stuff you got to know. It, going in there is not like going into somebody's house. It's very different. Same thing with the jails. Uh, same thing with doing a pasty work. That's a whole different animal. So if you're looking to build diversity in your foundation, I said this uh, when I was in Seattle, my diversification in 2008 was refi, purchase, seller, VA, reverse. How diversified does that sound? It was all loan signing work. Today... You know, I do apostille work, I do HO election, HOA election work, I do trust work, I do hospital work, I do a lot of different uh, things to support my business. So if one goes away, I still got plenty of other revenues, uh, income streams coming in. Okay, that's all I got. Awesome. Thanks, Laura. Um, Val Dimitra, thank you for your patience. What is your question for us today? Before I ask my question, I just want to talk to Garrett. Um, I am working with the Maloney's um, because I have actually two groups. I have one, uh, I'm in a senior community, so I'm going to do a, an event in April with a senior community. And I also have a senior community that I used to live in, which I'm going to be doing um, probably the end of April. And so because I'm brand new at this um C-N-T-D-A. I had to look at the initials. I haven't got I know, it yet. So long, isn't <laughs> I wrote it? Them down. I wrote <laughs> them down. Um, since I'm new to this, I asked them if they would help me because um, I didn't know how to. I spoke with the managers of these two different facilities and they said it was okay, but they are large groups and they're seniors. So some seniors are tech and some seniors are not. One of the facilities, um, they don't have a room that's going to have a big screen. So he, he's telling me um, that I that they can do it on Zoom and I'm going to just get um, a HDMI. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then they can present it. And then the other one, um, they do have a large facility with the, you know, the screen and everything so that I can do it. So I have asked them to help me to develop flyers because I just didn't know what to say in the flyers you know, to, to introduce this to them, to the so community. So they were agreeable to that? Yes, yes, Great. yes. Fantastic. They're so, so easy to work with. I'm glad right. that you had that experience. And thanks for sharing. So now Garrett is reassured he can reach right. out and get some information to from uh, Stephanie. But did you have a question for us, Belgium? I was just looking um, at the time. I know we're coming up on the end of the call here. I want to make sure we get our last three questions in today. Just, just, just real quick, you talked about the go to um, the go to be.com. Uh -huh. And I know you said that once we pass the exam that they put up a profile. Do we have to go in and add something to that? Hold on. Hold on. They don't put up the profile. They start your profile. We okay. have limited information on you. And okay. it's basically usually just your name. And sometimes people, when they sign up for um, these programs, they don't even put their name in there. They just put their email address. So we start it with what we have available and then you have to go in and round that out. And you were sent an email with instructions on how to do right, that. Right, if right, you have okay. any questions at all, you can mm -hmm. email admin at okay. gotary.com. And that's Zion. And he will help you 
um, get that squared away. If there's any okay. technical issues you're having, but yeah. we just not do Definitely. the whole profile for you. Okay. You to go in and optimize that. Thank you. All you right. It, all right. Thank question. you. Thank you. Hey, Debbie, what's your question for us? You're on mute. Yeah, I just unmuted. Um, on the pricing, on uh, general notary work, my service fees, uh, I don't just use a radius because right around me, I have homes that are 9.5 million and 12 million. Those are two of the houses I'm going to today. Um, and then I have houses, you know, the other direction that are 900,000. So my service fees sort of, ability to pay is a little bit of it. Um, I don't know if I'm being, um, I don't know. I I tend to charge the people in the $900,000 houses a smaller service fee than the ones that are in the $9.5 million homes. Um, so. And that's it, you. And that's what's cool about owning your business is as long as you meet the state, you know, you're following the state guidelines, if you are allowed convenience fees, travel fees, those things in your state you are, because uh, Debbie's calling us from California, then she can make those kinds of decisions. I personally don't do that because I have known people that live in a $5 million house that are living hand to mouth because they made some poor decisions. So I, I use the screening process. Um, to to really make sure that I know how much of my time will be affected. Laura, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? I'm going to agree with you. I do not look at what their income is or their house is or any of that. I look at what is my work because it doesn't change. It yeah. is what it is. Regardless of their situation, my situation is the same. And that way I'm consistent. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. We have time for one more quick question from the one and only Celicia Young Jones in Florida. Celicia, well, what you got? Uh, hey, everybody. I, I actually just posted it in the chat and I walked into the restroom yesterday. I was out and about doing something and there was a post-it note on the mirror that said, you are great. And I, I have to tell you, I mean, this is from a stranger that has put a post-it note on a public restroom that says, you are great. So I just wanted to remind everybody, you are great. And what a fabulous way to wrap up our call. Because you know what? You are absolutely right, Celicia. Every single one of, one of us on this call, we are awesome people and awesome notary entrepreneurs. So um, thank you guys for taking the time to be with us today. We want to get wrapped up here because we want to honor your time spending the last hour with us. We appreciate it so much. Um, we will be back next week and we look forward to seeing you then. Laura, do you have any last words for us? Let's see. What's today? Tuesday. Make it a great week. Have a good Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have a fabulous week, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tuesday Notary Titans. Take care. Bye. Bye.